Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at heat capacity. We're going to be looking at specific heat capacity, heat energy, how to get the units of heat capacity and specific heat capacity, and how to use the formula. So stay tuned. The formula for heat capacity begins with the formula for heat energy. Heat energy, this is the formula, Q is equals to mc delta theta. So here we have Q is for heat energy. So this is the heat energy that is gained or lost by a substance. M is the mass of the substance that we're talking about from which the heat is gained or lost. C is the specific heat capacity of the substance. And delta theta is the change in temperature. Delta is for change, theta is for temperature. So delta theta is change in temperature of the substance that has just gained heat or lost heat. So what is heat capacity? From this formula, Q is mc delta theta. Heat capacity is m and c. m times c is heat capacity. Together they are heat capacity. And heat capacity is represented by capital C. Small c is specific heat capacity. I'll get to that later. But for heat capacity, it is capital C. So when we rearrange the formula, we get heat capacity is equals to the heat energy per unit change in temperature. The units for heat capacity, in physics, the units of a certain physical quantity is very easy to determine if we know the formula. So when we rearrange the formula to make heat capacity the subject of the equation, unit for heat energy is joules and the unit for change in temperature is degree celsius so the unit for heat capacity is joules per degree celsius there's another unit we can also say joules per kelvin so there's two units for heat capacity either joules per degree celsius or joules per kelvin now the reason we can either use degree celsius or kelvin is this this is the degree celsius scale this is the kelvin scale we start with 0 Kelvin, which is the absolute 0, it's the lowest temperature. And then 0 Kelvin is minus 273 degrees Celsius. So in order to convert from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, we add 273. So as we go up, we reach 0 degrees Celsius. 0 degrees Celsius is 273 Kelvin plus 273. 5 degrees Celsius is 278 because 5 plus 273, 278 Kelvin. So if this formula was, this is heat capacity if this formula was q over theta instead of delta theta if it's just q over theta then we will get different values because if i was talking about a temperature of 5 degrees celsius i will put 5 degrees celsius here but if it was in kelvin it would be 278 kelvin so we would get different answers but this is not theta this is delta theta delta theta is the change in temperature so let's look at this the change in temperature from 0 degrees Celsius to 5 degrees Celsius is positive 5 degrees Celsius. The change in temperature, the same change in temperature but in Kelvin is from 273 Kelvin to 278 Kelvin. But the change in temperature is still 5 Kelvin. This is why it doesn't matter whether we use degrees Celsius or Kelvin. The change in temperature will have the same magnitude in both units. On to the definition of heat capacity. So what is heat capacity? Very loosely, heat capacity is the ability of an object to hold heat. Okay, the formal definition, for definition in physics, we always look at the formula. Most of the time, we can find our definition within the formula itself. So it is the heat energy supplied to increase the temperature of a substance by 1 degree Celsius. Let's look at this one by one. Q is heat energy. The heat energy that is supplied to a substance to increase the temperature. So here, for purposes of definition, we say heat energy supplied. But remember, it can be heat energy lost as well. But for heat capacity, the heat energy supplied. So when heat energy is supplied, the change in temperature is the increase in temperature. Heat energy supplied to increase the temperature of a substance by 1 degree Celsius because this is per unit change in temperature. One unit change in temperature is one degree Celsius or by one Kelvin. So what does this mean? The heat capacity of an object 
depends on how much the temperature changes when we supply a certain amount of heat. Let's compare now. Let's say the heat capacity of an object is high. An object has high heat capacity. It has a high ability to hold heat. That means even when we supply a lot of energy, the change in temperature will not be much because it, is, it has an ability to hold heat, high ability to hold heat. So when we look at the formula, we can tell right away because heat capacity and change in temperature is inversely proportional. Provided that the heat supply is constant, when the heat capacity is high, the change in temperature will be low. So even though we put in a lot of heat energy, we supply a substance with a lot of heat energy, the change in temperature, the rise in temperature will only be small. So more heat energy is needed to increase the temperature of a substance by 1 degree Celsius. This is for an object with high heat capacity. For an object with low heat capacity, again, they are inversely proportional. So if the heat capacity is low, then even though we supply a little heat energy, the change in temperature, the increase in temperature will be a lot. So this also applies to loss of heat energy and a drop in temperature. It is the same concept. If the heat capacity of an object is low, then the drop in temperature will be high. There will be a large drop in temperature. If the heat capacity of an object is high, then the drop in temperature will be low. It is the same concept. So when the heat capacity is low, less heat energy is needed to increase the temperature of the substance by 1 degree Celsius. For example, the easiest example is metals. Pour cold drinks into a metal cup, it cools down very fast. The temperature drops very fast and when we pour hot drink into a metal cup, it becomes hot very fast. So a metal is an example of an object with low heat capacity. Its heat capacity is very low, so the temperature changes are very high. An example of an object with high heat capacity will be water. Water has very high heat capacity. That is why we need to use a lot of energy to boil water. Because even though we supply so much energy, the change in temperature is small. Let's look at one example here. Let's say we supply 100 joules of heat energy, equal amount of energy to both an object with high heat capacity and an object with low heat capacity. So when we supply 100 joules of energy, this is the formula, heat capacity is Q over delta theta. So Q here is 100 joules because we have 100 joules of heat energy. If we supply 100 joules of heat energy, if the heat capacity is high, then there will only be a small increase in temperature because they are inversely proportional when this is constant. But when we supply 100 joules of energy, the same amount of energy to a substance with low heat capacity, then this rise in temperature will be greater than this object. The rise in temperature here for the object with low heat capacity will be higher than the object with high heat capacity. Okay, so going back to the original formula, Q is mc delta theta. We know that this C, capital C here, is heat capacity. And we also know that the small c is specific heat capacity from just now. C is equals to MC here. Let's say we have a mug, a metal mug. The heat capacity of the mug will be the heat energy that is supplied to increase the temperature of this whole mug by 1 degree Celsius. This is the specific heat capacity. So the specific heat capacity, when we rearrange the formula, when we make this the subject of the equation, is simply the heat capacity per unit mass. So it is the heat capacity of an object for every 1 kilogram of the object. So the formal definition is the heat energy supplied to increase the temperature of 1 kg of a substance by 1 degree Celsius. The difference of the definition of specific heat capacity with heat capacity is simply the mass of the object involved. So when we are talking about specific heat capacity, let's go back to the example of the mug. When we talk about heat capacity, we are talking about the heat capacity of the whole mug, that whole object. But when we talk about specific heat capacity, we are talking about only one kg of the mug. For every kg of the mug, what is the heat capacity? That is the only difference. If we go back to the formula of heat energy. We can rearrange. Specific heat capacity is Q over M delta theta. The units, again, all we have to do is refer to the formula. 
So specific heat capacity we have Q which is in joules, energy is in joules, mass is in kilogram and delta theta change in temperature is degree Celsius or Kelvin. So the units can be either joules per kilogram per degree Celsius or joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Sometimes they will give the unit in joules per gram per degree Celsius or joules per gram per Kelvin or kilojoules per kilogram per degree Celsius. So just be aware of the units that the specific heat capacity has when you apply in the formula. If they give you joules per gram per degree Celsius, then the mass of the object that you substitute here should be in grams. Just follow the units that are given to you and you will get the correct answer. That's it for this video guys. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please do support me by hitting the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. I'll be posting at least one video a week. I'll see you in the next video.